Hello everyone. Welcome to edupediaworld.com and thanks for watching Edupedia World videos. This is Vikas Patil. This is the third session of the chapter Structure of the Interior of Earth. In this session, we are going to learn about the layers of the earth. In this session, we are going to try and achieve the following objectives. Acquire knowledge about the basic properties of different layers of the earth. Summarize the thickness, state, temperature, density and composition of the layers of the earth's interior using a table. Before we begin our exploration about the interior of the earth, let us look at some of the common misconceptions that exist regarding the same. First misconception is that all the interior of the earth is molten. Second is that some people believe that there is hell under the land where all people are punished. Very common misconception. Some people think the solid crust is denser than the molten mantle. All these are misconceptions. Let us explore the facts. The first in the outermost layer of the earth is the crust. It is in solid state. We all know it as lithosphere as well, which means rocky layer. The most abundant rocks of earth's crust are granite and basalt. These two rocks are also known as the primary rocks since all other rocks are the derivatives of these rocks. The most abundant minerals found in the earth's crust are quartz and feldspar. Granite and basalt also have abundance of quartz and feldspar. The most abundant elements of the earth's crust are oxygen, silicon, aluminium, iron, magnesium. A surprising fact is that oxygen is the most abundant element on the earth's crust. The average density of Earth's crust is 3 grams per cubic centimeter. And as learned in the previous session, the average thickness of the Earth's crust is around 60 kilometers. The temperatures rise as we go deeper in the Earth's crust and it reaches close to 200 degrees Celsius. The Earth's crust has two parts. First, the continental crust and the oceanic crust. Let us look at both in detail. The continental crust is what we live on. It is known as Cial. It consists of silicate and aluminium as the most abundant elements. The continental crust carry the continents. The most abundant rock of the continental crust is granite. The average density of continental crust is 
2.5 gram per cubic centimeter and its thickness ranges between 70 to 80 kilometers on average oceanic crust it is also known as sima as it consists mainly of silicate and magnesium oceanic crust carries the ocean and is also beneath the continental crust the most abundant rock in the oceanic crust is basalt the average density of the oceanic crust is 3 grams per cubic centimeter and the thickness is between 10 to 20 kilometers on an average the next layer is mantle mantle is in molten state mantle extends 2900 kilometers the average density of mantle is 5.5 gram per cubic centimeter the temperatures go very high in mantle the temperatures range between 200 to 2200 degrees celsius in mantle the temperature rises as we go deeper in mantle so the upper mantle is cooler as compared to the lower mantle this gives rise to convectional currents in mantle this hot molten material moves throughout the mantle in the form of convectional currents most abundant rocks of mantle are dunite eclogite and peridotite you would think if we have not gone to mantle how do we know about the rocks present in mantle well we also know about the most abundant minerals which are olivine and pyroxene which are mainly composed of silicon oxygen magnesium and iron the question stays as how do we know so much about mantle well there is no direct way to explore mantle but we use three different methods to study the composition of mantle as we all know that the oceanic crust is thin and the probability of magma erupting from the oceanic crust is very high as compared to the continental crust which is very thick we believe that the magma that comes out from the volcanoes present on the oceanic crust come from mantle so if we study the submarine volcanoes we can find out the composition of material present in mantle second as we all know now that seismic waves are used to study the interior of the earth scientists have used p waves and made them travel through different types of rocks and it was observed that the speed of p waves in the three rocks eclogite dunite and peridotite was similar to the speed of p waves observed in mantle this suggests that these three rocks are of same composition as mantle we also believe that the primitive earth was a meteorite so by studying meteorites we can make some hypothesis about the interior of the earth including the mantle core 
earth's core is divided into two parts the outer core and the inner core the outer core is in liquid state of course the temperatures here are very high and they are close to 3000 degrees celsius it is very difficult for any material on the earth to stay in solid form at such high temperatures earth's outer core extend 2300 kilometers it is believed that the core is formed by iron and nickel average density of outer core is 8 grams per cubic centimeter since the outer core is in liquid state it blocks the s waves and help us learn about the extent of layers of the earth the inner core the inner core is surprisingly in solid state despite the fact that the temperatures here go up to 5000 degrees celsius you would think how is it possible for any material to remain in solid state at such high temperature well the solid state of inner core is due to the tremendous pressure that is exerted on the inner core from earth due to this high pressure on every part of the inner core the material in the inner core is not able to convert to liquid form and thus is still in solid state the average density of inner core is 10.3 grams per cubic centimeters this is a snapshot view of the interior of the earth first we begin with the crust which is 60 kilometers on an average thick when we cross crust we come to asthenosphere which is a jelly type layer between the crust and the mantle some people believe that a sonosphere is part of the mantle this slippery layer helps the crust to remain in solid state and in stable form the boundary between crust and mantle is known as mohorovesic discontinuity mantle is in molten form and it is 2900 kilometers thick after mantle comes the outer core the boundary between mantle and outer core is known as kuttenberg discontinuity the outer core which is in liquid state is 2300 kilometers thick after the outer core we have the inner core the inner core is again in solid state and its radius is 1200 km well this was all for this session in the next session we will try and explore about the earth's magnetism Don't forget to watch. Thank you.